Hello, and welcome to the D Heart House podcast. This is episode 37. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from West Texas. This is my knitting podcast, and you are in my craft room. Yay! Uh, today is Sunday. It's Father's Day here in the U.S., so it's June 17th. That's right. I wrote it down, I swear to God. And, um, yeah, it's actually kind of cloudy here. And I won't lie, it rained. Like, a little bit. Which is good. We don't get a lot of rain out here in West Texas. And usually when we do, it I'm not even kidding, it usually pours rain. And then the streets get flooded and it's just crazy. Uh, but we didn't have that today, which was a treat. In fact, I will not have to turn on the sprinklers today. Makes me really happy. <laughs> you have no idea how much water I pump on my grass. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I should just let it get all brown and crispy. No, I won't do that. Anyway. This is a knitting podcast. So on social media, you can find me on Instagram as Read Knit Run. You can find me on Ravelry as Liddy Knits 2. And you can find the show notes for this podcast in the D Heart House podcast group on Ravelry. So I post show notes. We have knit alongs and make alongs. And one of the things I'm going to talk about here soon is the need for test knitters. Okay. So, perfect segue. I am wearing a new shawl that I designed. I know. After the last podcast, I was really, really itching for a shawl to knit. And I don't know. I just thought let's design one. So I did. So I have been in just a little background here. I've been in this cleaning kick, which usually happens about this time of year because it's summertime. I'm a college instructor. I am teaching summer classes, but it's not as demanding on my time as during the fall or spring semester when I have you know, a full load of teaching. So I find I have a little more time to be at home. And what do I want to do? Clean things. Why? Because it's a mess. So the craft room has not been immune to that. I did rearrange and tidy a little bit in here, but I'm also feeling like I want to use up my leftovers. So the yarn I used in the shawl are leftovers from previous projects which is nice. We, you know, as knitters, we know we have leftovers from projects. So it's kind of nice to have projects that are meant to use leftovers. So it is a shawl. It is a um, boomerang shape for the shawl, which means it is a little bit asymmetric, not like intensely asymmetric. And it's also, um, it has a triangle shape, but it's not very deep. So if you can see, this is just how deep it is right here. And yes, I am in West Texas where it gets very hot. It does get cold in the winter, but it's not like it's cold here for a long time. Like when I lived in Michigan and Montana, when winter seemed to last like six months, it seemed like. Winter is not that long down here as far as cold temperatures. So it is nice to have a smaller shawl that I can throw on when it's cool but not cold. So for me I like this shape, especially living down here. So um, I use two colors of yarn. I've got a main color and a contrasting color. So the main color is this uh, speckled yarn and it is by Yarn Cafe Creations, and the color is Ocean Mist. So it's this really pretty pale blue with speckles of orange, green, and yellow. 
and it looks really pretty. I knit a pair of shorty socks out of this yarn and so I had a lot left over. In fact, I had 70 grams of the skein left over. And then the contrasting color is a solid. This color is by Cascade Yarns and it's a teal blue which of course is a number and I don't know off the top of my head. So the idea is to have two colors that they I wanted colors that coordinated but contrasted. So I went with this nice speckle yarn, but I didn't want the solid yarn to actually match any of the speckles because I wanted to make sure they contrasted. So, yeah. It is a garterlicious shawl. Okay. Do you have to purl when you make the shawl? No. You don't have to purl anything which is awesome, which is also how I was able to make this so quickly. Um, there is a beautiful texture stitch in the middle, and you can really see that texture with the two colors. Oh my god, I cannot tell if you can see that. Yeah, so with the two colors working together, oh my gosh, I love it. And there's some lace, you know, and some striping, because we got to keep it interesting, you know. So yeah, it's a little bit asymmetric. This point on the triangle here is not directly in the middle. Um, but this is very quick to knit up. Very easy. Um, would I say it's beginner friendly? I'd say it's like an adventurous beginner friendly because the texture stitch just requires it's not difficult but it's it's not as brainless as garter stitch so a confident beginner right a beginner that's looking to to take it to the next step past just a plain garter stitch shawl so um this has yarn overs and slips and increases and decreases and that's it. And there's no purling. There is no purling in this shawl. I love it. Anyway, um, yeah, this is a new design. I have half of the pattern typed up right now, today, as I'm recording. I need to type up the second half, and um, then I will be ready to ship it out to test knitters. So, if you would be interested in test knitting this shawl, I have more information in the D Hart House podcast group on Ravelry. I have a thread called Test Knitters Needed. So anytime I design a pattern that's ready to be test knit, I post it there and ask for test knitters. So that thread just stays open and as I design patterns, I just change the photo, change the information about what needs to be test knit, and then ask for new replies. So if you would like to test knit this shawl, please reply to that thread in Ravelry. I will finish typing up the pattern um, I'll ask for your email address and then I'll send it to you. Mm, I'm so excited. So, speaking of new designs, mm -hmm. I know I'm having fun with designing patterns. If you've never tried it, just, just play around with it because it's super fun and exciting. So, um, I have shown these socks before and I've shown them as a finished object before and now I've finally gotten around <laughs> to editing the pattern since my test knitter has finished and replied with comments. So this pattern is now up on Ravelry. So these are my Garden Trellis socks. They are Colorwork socks and it is written with a chart in the pattern. You follow that same chart for the entire sock, as you can see. 
Okay, it is written with a short row heel that is included in the pattern instructions. This is knit toe up. Okay, um, what was I going to say? Oh yes, I use a uh, Turkish cast on when I do toe up socks. So for those of you who don't know how to do tur Turkish cast on or you need a refresher, I did post a link to a video in the pattern. Uh, it's not a video made by me. It is the video that I watch when I need a refresher on Turkish cast on. Um, and then on the bind off, I use Lori's twisty bind off. And I also posted a link to her video in the pattern. Again, it's not my video. I did not make it. It's the video that I watch when I need a refresher on this bind off. Um, so yeah, this pattern is up and available on Ravelry and for a limited time, it will be 20% off. So for the first month of release starting today, so from today until July 17th, this pattern will be 20% off. If you use the code podcast20. So if you use the code podcast20 at checkout, you will get 20% off the garden trellis socks pattern. <sighs> yes, this is fun. Now my test knitter chose amazing colors to knit these socks in. So as you can see, I chose two solid colors that are super contrasting. So you can see the color work really well. She chose one solid and one, it looks kind of like a gradient, almost self-striping, but, but a gradient color yarn and oh my gosh it looks so cool you guys should at least check out the pattern page so you can see the pictures because her yarn choice was amazing and that's one of my favorite things about seeing other people knit up my patterns is what yarns are they choosing what changes are they making to the pattern like how is it going to look when it's done it's super exciting to see all those variations on a pattern so yeah check it out it's up and available on Ravelry right now D Hart House Designs yeah okay <sighs> another thing I finished and honestly I had this finished last episode and I totally forgot to show these to you guys um, Basically, I put them in the craft room when I finished them, covered it in other stuff, and forgot about it until I was cleaning the other day and found them. So, yeah, I'm super organized. So, I whipped up a pair of... Uno momento. I whipped up a pair of fingerless mitts. Yep. Very simple. I did not follow a pattern. I just winged it, won it. That sounds wrong. Wait, wait, nope. Not gonna say it. Um, I just knit as I saw fit. Okay, so um, yeah, these are knit out of Patton's Croy. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the colorway. I feel like I had the word rose in it. I don't know. I don't remember. Crud. I'm a horrible podcaster. Anyway, it's self striping, um, Patton's Cory yarn. In um, there are like two shades of pink here. There's a really nice um, darker brown and a lighter brown. Some kind of marl, like rose marl, maybe. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible. Anyway, um. Yeah, so I cast on, and I'm just going to write up a little free um, pattern, or maybe just even in the notes section. I'll probably write up a free pattern for these, because they're super simple, you guys. There's like barely any shaping. So I knit these on US size 0 needles. I knit a magic loop style, not that that matters. Um, 
I did a German twisted cast on at the bottom. I cast on 60 stitches, mainly an even number of stitches because you do one by one rib for the whole thing. So, and that's what makes it fit so well is the fact that it the whole thing is ribbing. There's no stockinette, so it's all this stretchy fabric. So it fits like a glove, you guys. Pun intended. So, um, yeah, so I just knit, gosh, I don't even remember how long. I'd have to get a tape measure. Uh, before I started increasing for the thumb. And yeah, I just increased on the underside and on the back of the hand every other row, just like I would for the toe of a sock, basically. Um, until I had so many stitches for the thumb. And I, I wrote notes. I just need to, um, I need to type it up so I can post it for you guys. So then I, I set those, put these stitches on waist yarn and then knit, a, you know, a couple more inches, inch and a half or whatever. I kept trying it on to figure out the length that I wanted uh, to get here. Bound off, Lori's twisty bind off, love it. Came back here, knit like what, I think three more rounds on the thumb. As you can see, that pink color matches that pink color. Mm -hmm. Lori's twisty bind off again, and then you're done. And that's it. There's no finger shaping or anything. Just super simple. And then I knit a second one to go with it. And what's nice about not really having much of a pattern is that, you know, you knit them both the same way but it doesn't matter which face is the front or which face is the back. So you literally just knit the same thing twice because it's not like it matters which one goes on the right hand and which one goes on the left hand. And yeah, I think they're really nice. I like that they're a little bit longer. You can see my Fitbit under here. Um, so that it'll actually tuck into my coat or my sweatshirt or whatever it is I'm wearing. Actually, we were up camping in the mountains in Colorado um, in May and that's what made me want to knit these is that I we packed gloves but like I wish I had packed more warm accessories to take with me so I figured why not I'll just knit some up right now and then I'll have them for later so yeah they just they're just one by one rib and they fit amazingly and I think these are gonna make these would make really nice gifts because that ribbing with the stretchy fabric means it's gonna fit anyone's hand and you know if there's someone with a bigger hand you might add a couple more stitches um, or if it's for a child you know take out a few stitches but um, basically it's just gonna fit whoever is wearing this perfectly so yep I love them I love them so those are gonna go in the glove box for when it gets um, cold outside and I need to start another pair in manly colors for Michael <laughs> cool all right another finish thing mm-hmm uh, I also had these finished for the last podcast and totally forgot to show them to you. And this works out really well because the last podcast had a lot of content, so I'm able to spread it out. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I finished a pair of socks for Michael. Yep. These are uh, knit out of Patton's Croy in the woodsy colorway. Which, by the way... When I was putting the project page on Ravelry, okay, and I was searching for Patton's Croy Woodsy, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the Woodsy color when you're adding the yarn and then there's the drop down box for color. I couldn't find Woodsy. So I just typed it in because that's what the label said. But um, yeah, strange, odd. Uh, it's. I mean, I don't think this is new. Anyway, uh, it's greens and browns, self-striping, with some speckle going on. 
I used, did I knit these? Yep, I knit these toe up. So I did Turkish cast on standard toe. I think I did 64 stitches on a US size one. Fish lips kiss heel. Nope, I did the short row heel because I wanted to get from more familiar with my own pattern. And um, I knit these with a much shorter leg. Uh, so Michael likes having some socks that are long and some socks that are short. So I de decided to make these short. Uh, excuse me, one by one ribbing for 10 rounds and then Lori's twisty bind off. And they're just kind of too big for these sock blockers. Um, in fact, I feel like the large isn't really quite large enough. And the mediums that I use for mine are a little bit too small as well for what I need. Yeah. So I will admit Michael bought some um, some plywood for me to take into his wood shop on the scroll saw so that I can make myself a pair of sock blockers that are the size that I want. And I just need to find the time to do that. <laughs> but yeah. I love these socks and I love that they just fold up. Look at that. Perfect little sandwich there. Sock sandwich! Okay, so yeah, um, I worked on these while we were on that camping trip actually. And did I finish them? Um, I don't know, that was so long ago. That was like a month ago. So yeah, those are finished. My colorwork socks are finished. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> okay, so I have to move some things because I'm running out of space here. So bear with me. I, as you know, started a new blanket because I'm insane. And yes, I did add some squares to it. I jokingly said, watch me lose my blanket mojo immediately, and yeah, I cast on a shawl and had to design one. So I kind of lost my blanket mojo immediately, but I did put seven more squares on my, my buffalo check blanket. So, yep, okay, I left the strings on so I would know which squares. Sure, that's the reason why. Um, so I added, all along this edge here, I added six on this edge. And then I started another edge, which I told you guys last time, because of the way I'm putting the mitered squares on, you kind of have to start in the middle of the row and then work out. So, so I got six along one side and then one lonely square up here on this other side. Yep. So there we are. That's where we're at. And yeah, I'm working this from the center out. So I'm kind of knitting around and around and around concentric squares. And um, I'm, you know, oh God, what's the word? <laughs> I'm changing the direction of the squares so that they make this really cool diagonal crisscross pattern with that miter decrease. And yeah, it's super fun. I'm enjoying myself. And yes, I have a stitch marker uh, marking that center for me just so I don't lose track of it while I'm working on this blanket. I love it. It's so cool. <sighs> did not put any squares on the other blanket, but I want to this week. Okay. I have something else to show you. Let's switch gears here a little bit. So on the last episode, episode 36, I showed you guys my brand new spinning wheel. No, it's used. It's new to me, but my new spinning wheel. And yes, I immediately went out and bought more fiber because Duh. So I want to show you guys the fiber that I ordered. So I got this from 
BZB fibers on Etsy and I got two different things of fiber. So this is merino and this is not dyed. This is undyed merino. Oh my gosh, isn't this gorgeous? Okay, first of all, her pictures. Do I want to take this out of here? I probably don't want to take this out of here. I'll slide it out a little bit just to reduce the glare. But her pictures on Etsy super match what I got. So I'm very, very happy. But yeah, oh my gosh. It, the gray and the brown in there. It's so soft. Oh my gosh. I'm really excited to spin this up. Mm -hmm. So that's BZB. I hope I'm saying that right. BZB Fibers on Etsy. You should check her out because her fiber is gorgeous and it's such a good price. And then I got a dyed one. So this one is called Sleeping Beauty. And what is the fiber content? I don't remember. Look at that gold right there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, it is so pretty. So blue, green, brown. You saw that ooh, pop of gold in there. There's a little bit of like a peachy pink coming through here. Oh my lord, I cannot wait to spin this. I think ooh, I'll probably do this after I practice some more with like this and the um, Malabrigo that I still have and I'll probably save this for when I'm like a little more experienced because oh my god this is going to look so good. Oh. Yeah, I'm excited. Let me just let me just see if I can find the receipt real quick from my order to tell you the fiber content. Okay, I found it. So first of all, her card I also found. So BZB Fibers, and I didn't rip the staple out of there, but she is on Etsy, okay, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. And holy crap, her, yeah, her fiber is gorgeous, so check her out. Okay, so this gray and brown is Merino Natural Undyed Wool Roving Comb Top, okay. Humbug blended. Not entirely sure what that means, but like I said, I'm still a beginner. Uh, this is four ounces, and like I said, super reasonable pricing. Uh, the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. Oh, there you can see that gold. Oh my god. Yeah, so this is Custom Blend Merino Bamboo Silk Comb Top Wool Roving, and it's four ounces. Mm -hmm. Let's just give that a feel, shall we? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it is really packed in this bag, but you can still tell how soft. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, look how pretty that is. Okay. So if you're into spinning, check her out. I can't remember if she had yarn in her shop. I feel like she also... Uh, I shouldn't th say things I'm not sure about. Anyway, super reasonable pricing. Check out her shop because holy cow, it's amazing. I can't wait to spin with it. I know it's going to be awesome because it feels amazing. So yeah, that is that. That is my episode, you guys. Um... Yeah, that's all I have. I need, oh, I just remembered. Speaking of my blanket, which I totally wasn't. Uh, don't forget we have the Cozy Couch Make Along going on in the D-Hard House podcast group on Ravelry, where I challenge you guys to finish an adult-sized blanket this year. We also have the Cozy Crib Make Along, where I challenge you to finish a baby blanket this year. 
Um, they are make-alongs so you can knit, crochet, sew, weave, whatever craft you like to make such blankets. I have separate threads for adult size blankets versus baby blankets. Um, so things are a little more fair based on the amount of work one has to do. Um, and I don't care when you start these projects as long as you finish them in 2018. So um, I also have a chatter thread going where you guys can post like progress pictures. You can chat about your projects, um, compare, contrast, ask for advice, whatever. And, um, and then the finished object threads are just for posting a picture of your finished object. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what it is you guys end up making. Uh, the chatter thread is a good place to share pattern ideas, suggestions help. Um, there's the crochet granny stripe blanket. Ugh, I cannot talk today. I'm sorry. The crochet granny stripe blanket, which I have not made, but looks really cool. And people have different suggestions on how to add in the yarn, like you know, do you hold the yarn double? Do you, do you not hold it double? Do you, what's it called, magic knot your yarn so that it just starts when the other one ends? Do you make sure you have enough to do a whole row and if you don't have a whole row then you won't use that yarn? You know, that kind of thing. Um, it can be neat to talk about. Even the blanket square stuff. Like, how do you decide what you're gonna do? So, Anyway, I have those make-alongs going on in the D Hard House podcast group, so check it out. If you have a blanket in progress already, then whenever you finish it this year, you can post it and be entered into the drawing for a prize. Okay, that's all I have for you guys. Um, it has been fun. I I kind of like doing this every week because then I don't I don't have enough time to forget things because clearly I forgot things last time so <laughs> anyway um yeah so check out the the podcast group for information about test knitting make alongs show notes check out D Hard House Designs for the new pattern and um that's all I have. So happy knitting, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!